Kicking us off at number five, we have SCP-1562. While not a monster by definition, largely because it isn't alive, this innocent looking playground feature has terrible side effects that honestly give me chills. Claustrophobes, look away. 1562 is a metal playground slide originally placed in a pretty ordinary playground. A few kids in the area went missing and the foundation looked into it and found out that the slide was to blame. Currently all testing has been suspended. After experimenting a couple times it became crystal clear that sending people down the metal incline would only result in more misery and loss of resources. The slide functions normally most of the time, you know, as slides should. You can climb up the ladder, take a seat at the top, and propel yourself towards the bottom for hours of classic playground fun. But if you're a little daredevil and prefer to take the bull by the horns, you'll likely activate the anomalous effect. Anyone who slides down headfirst on their stomach with their arms tucked in at their sides will disappear instantly and completely before they reach the end. Nobody knows where they went or how to get them back, although communication is possible. To this point, retrieval, not so much. Any sort of safety line attached to those daring slide surfers will be cut upon their disappearance. The destination of those who disappear seems to be in another dimension. This might be tolerable if not for the position they find themselves in. Remember how the subjects were on their stomachs with their arms at their side? Well, they remain in that position, but inside of a cramped dirt and rock tunnel. It's like spelunking, but without a helmet or lights or a map or any guarantee at all that you'll be able to make it back to where you came from. Subjects have had trouble getting their arms free from their sides, and the only method of movement is through desperate wriggling. And if you wriggle far enough, you'll bump into the feet of the last person to go down the slide. They'll be stuck in the tunnel ahead of you. At that point, forward motion becomes impossible, and you're pooched. With your arms at your side, in a dark cramped tunnel, in another dimension. And then you get to listen to the last thing the person ahead of you said before dying. I don't mean to sound like a helicopter parent here, but please keep your feet in front of you while using the slide. Coming in at number four, we've got SCP-112. Your reaction to SCP may vary depending on your feelings about roller coasters. If you love the thrill of hurtling through the air in a metal cart, then this might not be so bad. But if you're a person who prefers not to be thrown through a full loop-de-loop, -loop, then 112 will ruin you. Known as the Blue Steel Surfer, the sit down roller coaster was a financial failure based on poor reviews from testers. The park was shut down and the coaster remained unused until some hooligans broke in and reactivated some of the rides. It was at this point that the anomalous properties were made very apparent. The ride will function normally until the car reaches the main drop. At that point, it'll disappear for three minutes and then rematerialize near the end of the loop. An extra dimensional roller coaster. Wicked. Like I mentioned earlier, people riding 112 have drastically different experiences though. Speaking of drastic differences, the outside observer will also witness something very different than what's actually going on. Once the car vanishes, those on board will realize that the ride time is massively extended, ranging from 4 minutes to many months. Those riding will report many features that do not exist on the ride, like bat wings, cobra rolls, and inclined loops. The world itself doesn't feel different, but the ride experience is very changed. Once getting off, they might feel sick or confused based on their subjective experience. Someone who is on for a perceived time of a month might feel extremely hungry and weak, even though the experience was really only three minutes. Whatever someone experiences while on this ride is completely unique to them. This proves to be highly distressing to those who end up with longer ride times, as they experience long periods of dizziness, exhaustion, and headaches, all while the person beside them is cheering and laughing and having a good time. So again, if you get lucky and find yourself on a 4 minute ride with a couple extra loops, you'll have a blast. If you're not so fortunate, you could end up being subjected to g-force for 5 months straight. I'd hate roller coasters too if that happened to me. Coming in at number 3, we've got SCP-1483. While the mass of land that constitutes 1483 isn't a monster itself, it is home to many strange and odd creatures that would scare the ever-loving crap out of you if you ran into one. If you find a specific crevasse in the Queen Alexandra mountain range, you'll be able to pass into this alternate Antarctica. Notable differences include a lack of land ice, a climate that fluctuates between 35 degrees Celsius and negative 35 degrees Celsius, and a 
species of humanoids known as Homo Antarcticus. There appears to be a complex government presiding over this alternate reality with technology, infrastructure and other markers of a modern society all being present. Most interesting is the fact that anomalous items and entities are common knowledge here and the folks presiding over the land have given foundation personnel limited range in which to study them. There's even a foundation type organization called the Imperial Institute of Paranatural and Esoteric Study. They've collected and organized many anomalous things and beings over the years and have allowed the foundation to take a look as well. Some of the notable entities include the remains of a giant unknown organism known as the Sanak Thea, an organized school of occult practice, two highly specialized humanoid species that rule the land during different seasons, extremely tall multi-limbed creatures that seem to be gods of some sort, and little aggressive buggers known as feastlings. It's an odd alternate world, but they seem to be doing alright. I'm not sure if I want to discover more about the strange beasts that live among the humanoids or just maybe leave it be. Like I always say, some questions are better left unanswered. Coming in at number 2, we've got SCP-262. This is a coat hypothesized to be a prototype military uniform at some point between 1500 and the early 1900s. Carbon dating has been inconclusive, although it appears that the wool used to create it is thousands of years old, even if the coat itself was assembled recently. 262 is full of arms. Like, it can manifest numerous arms through the dark inner lining. Not just human ones either, although most are indeed people based. There have been manifestations of reptilian tentacles, multi jointed cellulose limbs, the clawed paw of a predatory cat, and even every once in a while some feet and legs too. The space within the coat appears to be non Euclidean, and if you were to drop it over a person, they'd disappear into the void within, kind of like, you know, like Ramona Flowers' purse. In fact, it almost seems like the coat is collecting arms. Many arms from test subjects and mannequins have been seen protruding from the coat at times. The limbs can be manipulated by folks wearing the coat to varying degrees of success. Tests have included playing piano, defending against multiple attackers, and smoking and extinguishing cigarettes. And of course, the coat has attempted to use some test subject bodies to escape. It's proven to be pretty useful in doing so as well, using all sorts of arms to make its way through security. Now, would the space inside the coat be considered a pocket dimension? Is it collecting limbs to form some sort of army? It's, it's time to move on. And finally at number 1 we have SCP-517. This fortune telling machine is hiding a pretty dark secret. Although most people are pretty wary of things at this point considering all the pop culture attention they get. How many movies and TV shows have featured one of these cursing someone? Well. 517 is a big box containing a grandmotherly figure. The power cord has been cut and will not react if you fire a coin in the slot. But once an hour, the machine will power on if a person enters its field of vision. Grandmother will produce a fortune card from a slot on the machine and then shut down. The person who activated 517 is now the target of a bunch of shadowy entities that will attack at 1.43 am the next morning. They appear to be long, multi jointed arms spawning from a single place. These arms will then attempt to rush forward and capture the target. Once captured, the target will be dragged to a secluded area and brutally beaten until sunrise. Anyone who walks in on this will also be grabbed and thrashed. These beatings will continue until the victims are reduced to what I can only assume is a fleshy, bloody paste. The actual end state substance is redacted in the entry, probably for good reason. Nobody knows where these arms originate from or why they do this. However, grandma's fortune cards may provide a little illumination. Here are some examples of text found on the cards. How many times should someone be told to be good? Your mother raised you better than that. I'm sorry, but fair is fair. People who do terrible things deserve terrible things. You've brought this upon yourself, my dear. You look like you've made some mistakes. Some things are unforgivable, aren't they? Do you think they've forgotten? Jeez, Grandma, I only stole one cookie. What have you done to earn a serious beatdown from Grandma? Kicking us off at number 5, we have SCP-1171. This one shouldn't pose too much of a risk to us, but knowing that there's something out there equal parts hateful and cowardly is not much comfort. Anomalous activity was picked up in an old house in Queensland, Australia. Previously owned by multiple families, nobody reported unusual activity until the most recent owner claimed the place was haunted. The foundation sent a doctor to see what was going on and discovered that it was somehow channeling communication from an unknown extra dimensional being. This communication is done through an anomalous layer of condensation 
radiation appearing on window panes all throughout the house. The entity, who calls itself Beauremont, writes in this condensation much like how a school child would doodle in the condensation of bus windows. The doctor and residents can communicate back in the same way. This inhabitant from another world is actively hostile towards humanity, but also does a lot of talking and not a lot of acting. The foundation doctor has convinced Beauremont that he is also an extra dimensional entity, making the exchanges much more honest and cordial. The first recorded message from Beauremont was carbon based monkeys go home. Pleasant. Through back and forth discussion, we found out that this creature has five eyes and a mouth, is seven tendrils tall, has a brown carapace, a green bioluminescence, and blue eyes. He also acts like your uncle who makes sure everyone knows he isn't racist. He's not, okay? A quote from Beauremont reads I'm not racist or anything. Some of my best friends are human. But if they're as good as us, why do they need skin? Am I right? Most conversations with Beauremont end up like this, with him expressing dissatisfaction and malice towards us by bipedal creatures. At one point he broke the news that he would lost his job to a human and plans on becoming violent if this kind of stuff keeps up. Whether or not he'll make good on those threats is up in the air though, as when speaking with a researcher who was openly identified as human, Beauremont was mostly polite and pleasant until the doctor returned. Big talk, small extra dimensional being. Coming in at number 4 we've got SCP-507. Tommy, Steve, Bruto, Guy, Houdini, Grabnock the Destroyer. This SCP goes by many different nicknames. It's kind of a running joke he plays than anyone new he meets. A regular slightly pudgy guy, 507 himself is not a scary monster from another dimension. But as an individual who shifts in and out of different realities with no control over where or when he's going, he sees a lot of messed up stuff. These shifts can happen whenever, meaning it's often at inconvenient times, like mid sentence or when using the bathroom. 507 will blink into random areas in different dimensions and almost always be totally unaware as to where he is. Over time he's built up quite a kit of useful items to help him with this though. One of the first requests he made to the foundation was after ending up in a totally dark room and hearing unidentified breathing. He asked for a flashlight after this. As he continues on his interdimensional journeys, he encounters many things. A facility full of fungus riddled corpses seemingly breathing. So many spiders. That's all he would say about that trip. Eventually, he reappeared in the dark location, and this time he had a working flashlight on him. So he shed some light on the situation and saw a man in a dark suit and sunglasses smiling impossibly wide. Understandably freaked out, he switched off the light and fired a bunch of rubber bullets at the man. We'll see what happens next. <laughs> Currently the foundation has been supplying him as he flies through space time, going on ill advised adventures. He's seen plants that are always screaming, toxic house cats, two suns giving off immense heat, a group of wolf like humans that fattened him up and ate his hand, an alternate SCP-682, fire obsessed cults and more. However, he hasn't died yet, which is remarkable considering how painfully average he is beyond his whole phasing in and out of realities thing. A fun side effect of his travels is that whatever he's in contact with while teleporting will come with him, so he often brings people and alternate world tech with him to and from different places. Try not to touch him though, because you might end up in another dimension unawares. Coming in at number 3 we've got SCP-2682, a raspberry with infinite knowledge stuck to a piece of flypaper. Probably the scariest monster out there to be honest. Thank Thankfully it's been neutralized since discovery. This tiny berry can communicate telepathically in the Slovak language as well as through imperfect English. It can only communicate with people that it's been attuned to though and claims to learn through mental electricity. This communication has led to all sorts of discoveries related to its origins and the exploits of its people. Before I get to the explanation behind the raspberry I should probably let you know about the side effects of interacting with it. If you come into physical contact with this tasty little morsel, unpredictable and dangerous reactions can occur in your physiology. In a testing snippet, it has been documented that multiple subjects have turned into food objects upon contact. Spaghetti, croissants, you get the idea. So if you see a raspberry attached to flypaper, maybe keep your distance, unless you're a devout pastafarian, and then maybe spaghetti is your preferred mode of being. So back to its extra dimensional origins, 2682 claims to be from the limbo, or as it describes it, a hole in the mesh. It existed in a time and place where philosophers had discovered everything, and the study of wisdom had actually reached its end. This prompted their society to study the occult, find God, and then experiment on God. Then 
even when God had been expended, they reached into new universes to harvest impossible knowledge. The search for this kind of information is what likely brought our pal into this world and relegated them to the form of a raspberry attached to flypaper. Early in containment, 2682 didn't even know that it was a berry attached to sticky stuff or even what any of that meant. As it learned through the interview process though, it gained a deeper knowledge of the shapes and forms around it, eventually leading to a eureka moment that caused it to manifest a weird Dr. Manhattan style partial body and then disappear. Currently, this SCP is considered neutralized, but who knows when another extra dimensional fruit will manifest, maybe more aggressive than last time. Clunking its way in at number 2, we have SCP-319. I don't know if I'd call this one a monster, because the issue isn't a being from the other dimension. It is the other dimension. Back in the 1800s, an enterprising young scientist decided to design a machine that would allow him to cross into another universe. The builder didn't realize that the universe on the other side would have different laws of physics though, leading to his obliteration. Surprisingly, Sato Kaiba had nothing to do with this. Post obliteration, there is a hole in our universe. The other universe is leaking through and if any of it were to make it all the way in, our reality would be subsumed by the other one. It's kind of like if we lived in a big underwater bubble and someone poked a hole in the wall. But we wouldn't drown, we'd just cease to be. Right now the machine is holding this together, but that provides little comfort considering that it's a century old clockwork brass and glass contraption. Not much we can do with this except wait and see. Just stay away from the machine, don't mess with it. And finally at number 1 we have SCP-3935. So this one's totally terrifying, and I would highly recommend going and reading the whole entry, addendums and all before watching this. I don't want to say too much to folks out there who would get a kick out of reading the entire thing, so if you like spooky SCPs, go out and read this one right now. Alright, let's get into it. The foundation had to condemn an entire town and relocate the populace because of this. It all started beneath Salvation High School. A small antechamber was discovered underneath the school's pool containing a stone arch. Inscribed upon this arch was a phrase in English. The way below winds deeper, longer, unspeakable its patterns laid. The lost forever damned to wander this thing a quiet madness made. A member from an independent team fell into the antechamber and attempted to find an exit within. They never reappeared. After this, more research was done into the school and its surroundings and many strange things were discovered. Back in the 70s, students started hearing voices coming from beneath the school. They would notice faceless things instead of their own reflections and see students hanging from ropes attached to nothing. The odd happenings increased in frequency and intensity over a week with students phasing downwards through the floors, impossibly uniform flooding, words being whispered into everyone's ears all at once and dark entities floating through the air. Most of this was accepted by the students and staff. They didn't seem to think anything was wrong. This ended when the entire student body showed up on a day when the school was closed, witnessed the dark figure phase in and out of windows and then all got phased in and out of the ground. At this point, the students and the entire town were shipped out as the there wasn't much the foundation or any other organization could do to prevent further harm. Sending task forces always ended in disaster, so they decided to quarantine the town and leave it well alone. There's something going on underneath Salvation, but I don't know if anyone's gonna figure it out anytime soon. Crawling its way in at number 5, we have SCP-093. At first glance, this SCP isn't from another dimension or a monster. In fact, it appears just to be a small red disc carved from cinnabar, covered in circular engravings and unknown symbols. Honestly, that alone is pretty scary considering how much mercury is present in this toxic ore. But the fact that humans once dyed their clothes with this poison isn't what makes this SCP horrifying. Nope, there is a whole new world of fear to be discovered through this little crimson checker. Depending on who holds the disc, it will change color. As of right now, no one's completely sure as to why it changes color or what each one signifies. Some hypothesize that it has to do with the regrets of each person, although that's neither here nor there. The important thing is that when the disc is a different color, it leads to different locations. If left unheld by a human or on a surface that is not a mirror, 093 will move autonomously and seek out the nearest mirror. Once settled on a reflective surface, it will turn the silvery sheet into a portal of sorts. The location that it leads to changes depending on the color that the disc currently exudes. Through various tests, the foundation has sent many people into the portals and discovered a terrifying alternate reality. In the mirror lies an alternate earth in which a hyper-religious sect took over. 
a godlike figure appeared and told people of an upcoming holy war in which all survivors would be considered clean of sin. To help them fight, the figure granted humans a decade of insane technological advances and then immediately peaced out. This led to the discovery and use of a substance known as his tears. Dramatic, right? It's still unclear as to what this stuff actually is, but the folks in the Holy War world used it for a whole lot of different reasons. Mostly, though, it was used to cleanse sin and bring people closer to him. Criminals, adulterers, non-believers, you name it, forcibly cleaned through his tears. However, in a shocking turn of events, nobody could have seen this coming. Oh, why didn't somebody just think of the children? The stuff had some gnarly side effects. Too much of it in a pure state can and will turn people into horrifying monsters. Of course, why didn't anybody think of this before? Known as the unclean, these are giant bisected humanoids that crawl around on the ground using their huge arms. No face, no legs, no communication. These things usually move around slowly, but they can be very quick if agitated or alerted to a presence. And if they get close enough to a life form, they absorb it. At first they seemed controllable, dealable, but soon enough they brought about a genetic apocalypse, absorbing everything and never dying. Nobody could escape the unclean and as such this world ended. All that remains is the unclean. Let's just hope none of them make it to this world. Oh boy. Coming to number 4, we have SCP-1437. Some believe that this SCP provides another portal to the world of the unclean, which is a terrifying prospect. But hey, there's no proof as of yet, so let's just forget about it, right? 1437 is an endless hole in the desert that acts as an access point to an unknown number of parallel universes. These alternate worlds are only accessible through the mouth of the hole. All attempts to access 1437 through digging, blasting, or otherwise circumventing the main entrance leads to thick, impenetrable rock. Every once in a while, objects will fly out of the hole at great speeds. Things like a quarter, dirt, rocks, a map of North America written in Spanish, an alien skyline, disks of solid gold, and messages requesting objects, weather, services, and other things have been spat out. All sorts of these objects point to totally different versions of Earth existing somewhere at the end of this underground tunnel. Lots of potential for different organisms too, although living beings seem to die somewhere along the interuniversal highway. With other universes come other foundation type organizations and other objects flying out of other holes at other ends. Some are similar, some are almost unrecognizable. Religious themes, risk averse procedures, holes of different sizes, locations, interpretations, and more. There have been attempts to communicate with folks through the tunnel, whether it be through tributes, messages, questions, proposals to cooperate, or my personal favorite method of liaison, dead D-class. Charming. The unpredictability and infinite possibilities associated with this hole are what make it so scary. Folks from other worlds may try to breach our world with weapons and cause issues. Plus, a couple of saliva covered dismembered human body parts have been discovered and I really don't know what to make of that. So let me know what you think that might be down in the comments. Coming in at number 3, Tufto's Proposal. The Scarlet King. The Big Bad. The interdimensional being just waiting to crash through the thin walls separating us from sure destruction. I love this guy. So many good tales focus on the Tomato Prince, so many entries making vague references to his incredible reality altering power. Depending on who you ask and what their headcanon is, the raspberry royalty can be a whole lot of things. He also seems to have his fingers in a whole lot of pies, with plenty of popular entries seemingly hinging on the existence of a cardinal cardinal. My favorite bloody baron theory involves a certain procedure named after a certain doctor involving certain unnameable acts. But the fact that this could be hypothetically overwritten by Tufto's proposal is also very interesting. If nobody messes with what Montauk is doing, the reddish royalty may remain contained for as long as we would like. However, humans are typically prone to messing with things, so we'll see how that goes. To summarize, the Scarlet King wants us all gone and a very tenuous seal holds him in place. Good luck. Coming in at number 2, SCP-2639. Some good old video game violence, what's not to love? Unstoppable massacres of the innocent, you say? Yeah, oh, that's pretty rough. This SCP is basically three teens who got sucked into a modded version of Quake circa 1997. Their physical bodies ceased to exist and their minds ran inside of the computer. This fits the quota of another dimension, a virtual one. They would spawn into infinite new games and chat in the lobby between each bout. However, these games would physically take place in different areas across the world. A one kilometer squared zone would be sectioned off and the big beefy gun toting avatars would spawn in. The environments were destructible because they were real environments. 
experiments. Grunts, Rottweilers, and other modded enemies were actually real people covered with video game skins caught within the murder zone. So the teens in control had no idea that this was happening though, and as such mocked thousands of people all the while thinking they were just playing Quake. A foundation member was able to reach out to the trio and fill them in on the noxious activities they had been unwittingly engaged in. The news was not received particularly well. For a while, the teens became moody and withdrawn, a pretty reasonable response for hormonal gamers who had recently discovered they were mass murderers by accident. However, this story does have a happy ending. After having a good think about it, the good folks trapped inside the desktop decided they would become a mobile task force of their very own, Omega-9, the Scrubs. They act as a rapid response team for containment breaches involving violent, hostile anomalies. Non-human eliminations only, naturally. Even with this happy ending, it's a pretty terrifying group. In fact, the destructive power of these three was further explored in SCP-5000 where they were summoned by the New Look Foundation to take out some definitely non-human baddies, who actually turned out to be human after all. They're only as good as the hand leading them, so if they fall in with some bad company, we're all pretty screwed. And lastly at number 1, SCP-1936. Visit the town of Daleport, a sleepy, serene tourist town full of lovely churches, inns, and horrible abominations. <sighs> so close. Following the misguided efforts of the good Reverend Hawshore, the burgeoning villa of Daleport became shrouded in a shivering mist of sorts. Through this mist, plenty of Lovecraftian Elder God style creatures were summoned and bound to the town, leading to an all out war between horrors. Of course, there's no war without collateral, and the good people of Daleport definitely got a hefty taste of death and despair. The mist has dispersed now, revealing the damage done, but while it hung over the villa, unspeakable events took place. Some were friendlier than others, attempting to assimilate the humans rather than destroy them. But for every triangle faced peacoat wearing humanoid, there were multiple decapitated happy viscera spraying beasts to boot. Hashor wanted to bring all sorts of cosmic beings to one place and have them duke it out for total control of the laws of the universe. He had foreseen that there were many all powerful beings, but too many were unable to totally wrench control for themselves. So being a super genius diplomat, Hashor brought them all to one place for a cosmic battle royale of sorts. Winner take all. His plan was to worship whatever came out on top for some choice rewards. This, as you may have guessed, did not go according to plan. The whole town was destroyed and no humans were left alive to be worshippers. There are plenty of anomalies strewn about the town now, like rooms that get smaller when you enter, floating corpses that move in only one direction regardless of force applied, and other unexplainable phenomena. What happened to the remainder of the so called gods, we may never know. Mysteries are good for your health. Right? If you're still itching to take a peek behind the cosmic veil, maybe reconsider. These interdimensional nasties would be reason enough to stay right where you are and ponder strictly the understandable.